Welcome to Fun Day Monday, January 2020. Here we are. It's interesting. When something happens, then the government gets their hands into it. They do. Yeah. The question this month was, in New York City, a bagel that is not yet toasted, buttered, or smeared with cream cheese is considered to be what? The answer was not A, was not B, was not C, it was D, non-taxable. Correct. And what was interesting about that question is I thought A, B, and C were so difficult, and D too, that nobody could really guess this hardly. It was a very difficult question for everybody. I think it might have been our toughest yet. I think so. I yeah, think so. Right. In fact, in, in New York City, they impose an eight cents tax right after the bagel is even sliced. Wow, so like just when the bagel gets sliced. Just for slicing the bagel. Eight cents. Eight cents, doing anything but just handing a bagel to you. Wow. You get an eight cents tax imposed. Right, well it reminds me of that song, Tax Man from the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> Everything you sit down on a chair, your chair gets taxed. You know, right. you know take a walk, your feet get taxed. <laughs> exactly, that's kind of what this reminds me of. Yeah, and I guess New York, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, so because many food service providers navigate complicated food tax regulations, so I'm sure it's not just New York, you know, when they cut the bagel, that crosses the line and becomes a prepared meal or food sold for on-premise consumption, which is taxable. Right. Which right. kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So uncut bagels or untoasted yeah. or buttered or smeared right. bagels, typically, typically sold for home consumption, they don't meet the definition of prepared, so they are tax exempt in New York City. Well, yeah, and I would think that that might be true everywhere else because when you go to the store, you're just buying it from the store and I always have to cut them. I always wish they were cut, yeah. but they're not. Yeah. <laughs> so that does kind of make sense. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't yeah. really checked it out in Colorado as to what the tax. I know, I know, but it, it's interesting. It was a tough, tough question. Yes. Hopefully next month won't be as tough, but either way, when you play, we donate. In fact, speaking of that, last month I wanted to recognize our winner from last month, which is Susan Borges, or Borges. She asked us to donate the money to Inside the Orchestra, which is great because we were going, who is that? Well, what it is, is it brings orchestra music to the Denver metro communities. And I had no idea, which, you know, the, I know the schools sometimes cut the music program or the orchestras from the schools. Uh -huh. Well, this program brings money in so that kids can have orchestra in their schools. Yeah, they get hands-on experience with the orchestra. So I thought this was a really cool place to donate to. I mean, all of our donations have been really unique and different. They have. And this one was especially. So I wanted to recognize Sue Borges. Thank you so much for for asking us to donate uh, the funds for last month. Let's see who wins right. this month. It's been really interesting <laughs> to see the different types of organizations oh, that know. we can donate to, to I know. and what they do. I'm gonna keep all it's of great. these and donate some myself to ones that I want, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. All right, I'm gonna let you pick uh, okay. this time. All right, I'll pick this time. <laughs> I think I picked last month. All right, I've got one here. This one. If I can get it open. Greg and Tina Morris, congratulations. congratulations. All right, so you get to pick the charity of your choice for January 2020. So I look forward to talking to you guys real soon. Congratulations on getting picked for January. Congratulations. Yeah, so have a great year in 2020. And uh, please don't keep us a secret and have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.